Salutations, my Fallout lovers. It is Maddie here with week 33 of the Ham Radio Podcast. And it is me, the Lone Vault Wanderer. Um, Noah obviously isn't here, so arc joke, yada, yada, yada. <laughs> uh, wow, good thing that I... Okay, sorry, hold on. We have to stop recording for a second. What's what the up? fuck? I might have to record with Shadow Play. <laughs> I'm putting this at the start of my video. (laughs) Salutations, my Fallout lovers. It is Maddie here with week 33 of the Ham Radio Podcast. And before you ask, yes, you're going to hear an audio difference on Lone's End because I am using Shadow Play. (laughs) I win. (laughs) (laughs) I fucking love it. Uh, Of course, I am the Lone Vault Wanderer. Uh, Noah is not here. His arc broke down. Blah, blah, blah. You get that. Yes. <laughs> so it's just a, a lone and Maddie week. No guest. We figured we'd do what we did back with uh, Wolfenstein, the old blood, and just just, just you and me, man. Very just intimate. I like it. It's nice yeah. and cozy. Yeah. <laughs> but before we get intimate here, we got some, some stuff to talk about. We got sugar bombs. Link down below. We got t-shirts. We're doing new site things with the t-shirts, but for now, if you guys are interested at all, uh, link down below for that. There's also timestamps down below. If you guys are interested in hopping around the podcast to whatever segment you prefer to listen to. And then finally, ladies and gentlemen, instead of asking a question this week to get you onto the Ham Radio podcast, there are more Pip-Boy editions available in Europe, right, Lone? Where are they available? I think uh, Game, which is a UK outlet, has them. I'm not too sure, but they were bundling them, I think. It was really weird. But don't be surprised Mm -hmm. if they're, like, already sold out because, obviously... They probably are, but... You might want to start scouring the internet a little bit because they're, they're popping up in places. Like, I've heard there's some in New Zealand. I remember uh, mm. Fallout Temple. That's a, an Instagram account I follow, and they're, she's awesome. But um, she was saying there's some available there. Uh, I've seen them pop up all over the place. So keep an eye out, ladies and gentlemen. We just wanted to make you guys aware that there might be a Pip-Boy out there somewhere if you're lucky. Um, but, yeah, use that internet to your advantage and try to find one. Definitely. Anyways, Bethesda News Roundup. We have an interesting week, I must say. Let's start off with our weekly discussion on the Fallout 4 special video. We had Intelligence this week, and Intelligence is usually the more OP stat, in my opinion. Mm. You know, it, especially because it, like, always changed how much uh, s- skill points you got. Where, yeah. you know, it, it, it just made it the easy go-to perk. Like, if you want to have a good character, you want to up your intelligence. Yeah, it's always, like, default intelligence to 9. Get that done. And yeah. then get the bubble head, go to 10. It's... Yeah. yeah, exactly. So my question for you, Lone, I'll get my opinion afterwards, is do you think that based off what you saw in the intelligence video, do you think it carried over? You know, that intelligence is still this strong stat. They said that it affects the amount of XP you get now instead of skill points because obviously we have the perks. Yeah, I, I find that interesting that it affects XP because like even with Fallout 3, the XP per- perk, they gave you 10% more. I thought those were a bit redundant because eventually you'll get to that certain level. It just speeds up the game. Um, mm-hmm. But in terms of intelligence, I, d- I don't know how they're going to work it now because as we as we talked about, you know, intelligence beforehand, when you, when you up that to 9, it would improve the amount of skill points that you get every level. And now that there aren't skill points, what does it do? Like gives you more XP, but that's definitely not as OP as it, was, as it was before. It just essentially escalates or, you know, exacerbates how fast you actually level up. So that's pro- also, yeah. Uh, not to interrupt you, but it's also, I, ju- I just thought of this, it's interesting that it, it changes how much XP you get because in all the, I don't want to say all the previous Fallout games because I'm not sure about 1 and 2 and Tactics, but mm. for 3 and New Vegas, I know that when you change your difficulty, it de- it increases the amount of XP you get from when you kill an enemy. Yeah, yeah. So, so I wonder if that's going to carry in to effect as well. Hmm. See, so it, you, could you like get double XP if you play on very hard and then ten intelligence? You know, exactly. Uh, would it be something like that? It, it's gonna it's gonna be interesting to see how it works because I I don't know. I, I know why they did the whole, you know, if you play it very hard, you get more experience because they kind of want to reward you for that challenge. Um, yes. I don't know, though, if New Vegas actually had that. I know Fallout 3 definitely did, but I think with New Vegas, you're, the difficulty you actually, played... Actually, you're at, right. Yeah, and, and I thought that was interesting, but it actually was like, all right, well, now I can play it normal because I know a lot of people like to play very hard because like they like to show off their muscles and stuff. <laughs> but <laughs> I like to play it normal because I like to have a, a fun game that's not just, you know, shooting a lot of, a lot of bullet sponges. Um, I don't find yeah. that enjoyable. Like, it's not a challenge when you're shooting a Deathclaw a hundred times, you know. So, 
it, it's going to be interesting, to say the least. Yeah, like, the amount of people that facepalm when, like, I'm doing my Road to Platinum series, and I go from, like, normal to easy at certain parts, or easy to normal, and they're like, oh, this guy can't even handle normal. It's like, there is nothing fun, in my opinion, no, about not. using, like, a, a, a fucking 48 damage sniper rifle and shooting a raider in the head four times and having him not die. Like, yeah. that's not fun. And, and it's <laughs> not annoying. realistic. I, like, yeah, I know, I, I, use, I use the realism argument a lot, and people are like, well, this is a video game, it's not meant to real, be realistic, but just think about it. You're playing in this wasteland, and there's a human, or, like, I, I remember the, the very first, like, drug addict you, you encounter in Fallout 3. Uh, I can't remember her fucking name. But you have to deal with her because of Colin Moriarty. And oh, it was very so hard. Uh, and I had I Fallout Wanderers Edition um, installed as well. So that might have affected it. But I fucking... It took me an entire 10mm pistol clip to, to kill her. And I was constantly shooting her in the head. And that's that's not fun. The very first enemy I encountered was like that. Now, I'm sure that that was Wanderers Edition. But even with very hard, you're still shooting like you know an enemy so many times to try and kill them. That's not a challenge yeah. to me. That's a that's a tedious process. So that's why mm-hmm. I like to play it you know at normal at the very least because it allows me to enjoy the enjoy the game and actually you know kill people after a couple of shots, which, which seems realistic so, to me. So that sounds like then with that discussion, it sounds like maybe the intelligence affecting your XP is good because now it's not based off difficulty and shooting enemy sponges. Instead, it's based off your special stat if you want extra XP, which you'll get without a doubt, which kind of, I think, reduces some of the value. Yeah, exactly. Where, um, but it also affects your your hacking. Um, what else was it? You could It seemed to hint at robotics experts again that you could do more damage to them, but you could also turn them around to help you. It's also um, it affects, like... Yeah, that it seemed like like weapon crafting and shit as well. Yeah. It seems once again really useful. Like it I don't seems know. Really powerful. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, but it doesn't seem. It seems powerful, but I don't think it seems. And maybe it's just me as OP. Yeah. It's... But then again, you know what? It's gonna be so useful because I just thought it also affects your your medic skill. Mm. You know, it affects how much you health you you can heal with your medic perk and how much radiation you take away with rat away so that's actually like, really powerful like holy fuck just yeah when you right? list it in like that kind of chronological thing i'm like yeah that's probably going to be really high for me personally um and mm-hmm. also so i like having an intelligent character because just it kind of fits with the way i like to play you know i'm this character yeah. that knows everything about anything and i'm very smart and i know my way around <laughs> and stuff but holy shit so it improves stim packs improves like rat x and rat away or whatever that's that's incredibly powerful. I don't want to say it's OP because we're hacking. Don't know. Yeah, exactly. Which can let you get into certain areas. It lets you do more damage. Then nerd rage is included, which at least according to other Fallout games, uh, three in New Vegas, mm. it's like your damage resistance goes up like fifty percent, and you also do like you get ten strength, so you do insane damage. That's and it's only when you're, you're when your health is below twenty percent. So it's uh, that on top of it. Yeah, well, to put um, it another way, I'm definitely going to be putting intelligence to nine. Like, I, yeah, and I was exactly. always going to do that, but this video has kind of bolstered that. Mm-hmm. Now, my thoughts are, let's let's take a look at the other specials real quick while we can and, and think to ourselves if it's if intelligence is balanced out. You know, you look at charisma, and that seems to kind of affect, um, obviously, your interactions with the wasteland uh, or the people in it, rather, you know, whether it's bartering or convincing someone to help you in a fight or um just a a natural speech skill then endurance seems to be your survival you know how tough you are Hmm. uh how much damage you can uh withstand and then perception's more of like your guns focused your vats focused uh lock picking explosives and strength seems to focus on like specialized whip weapons and equipment and your carry weight and stuff so when you hear all that, I, I know I, I skipped over a few things involved in each of these specials, but when you hear all that, do you think that maybe intelligence is a, uh, you think that stands amongst all of them, or do you think that's like a, uh, you know, it's balanced amongst them? I think if you were to ask me what the best perks out of that list were, sorry, perks, I mean special attributes, <laughs> I would say pro- obviously intelligence at the top and then maybe perception as the next one, mm-hmm. um, but the other one's like, to be honest, you can get away with having a, an average charisma. Now, I don't know, obviously, the niceties for Fallout 4 and what's it, it's, it's going to evolve, but yeah. you can you not have to convince everyone about things. Like, you, you can 
end up saving a bit more money and then going to the shop instead of having cheaper prices. Like, things like that. But in terms of, like, if you're in a battle and you need to heal yourself and it's this stim pack is going to give you that extra HP, then that's where intelligence comes into it. You know, with perception, it's going to give you a bunch of benefits as you just listed. But with the other ones, like strength, it does seem kind of... I don't want to say narrow, but... In terms of carry weight, that's a benefit. It's a kind of like a nice thing. You don't need a lot of carry weight if you want to carry a yeah, lot of shit. Yeah, you're smart with it. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Like you can just put stuff away instead of hoarding. And I- and the other ones are kind of you know so so. But we don't know what the game involves exactly. Like they could be really yeah. good, but we just don't know that yet. Now, see, I think a good counter to intelligence, based off just what we know off the description of it, is uh, agility. Because I know agility, they said like impacts your sneak and. Um, you know, you're, I don't know if it was sprinting. Um, I don't remember exactly what it was, but I knew it, it had like another set of like combat focused yeah. uh, perks. And I was looking at it and I was thinking to myself, you know, it would be either like intelligence, agility or perception for me as, you know, according to my player build, at least. Yeah. Um, it also really depends on these perk ranks, because like I know, like, for example, I was kind of surprised when they revealed the character system. They said, like, you know the the strong back perk is not just strong back anymore it's like now if you upgrade it you can sprint while over encumbered and then you oh, can that's fast fucking travel fucking awesome well, you can fast yeah. travel yes i'm totally yeah. getting that holy exactly. fuck how so annoying now... was it in like Fallout 3 in new vegas where you had the <laughs> drop, drop shit. shit like no i don't want to drop anything this is all good i want to go home and put it away and then <laughs> <laughs> so yeah like i said i think it also comes down to perk ranks where on paper maybe right now intelligence looks the best but perhaps with these ranks you know strength to me it's, i don't use strength all that often but now because of strong back and creating specialized weapons and uh armor it, it it's appealing to me i can't lie like i'm actually tempted to put like four or five into it mm-hmm. and I, I think and this is a mistake that i made i think eventually once you play the game long enough you're going to be able to try out each and every one of these things so mm-hmm. it, it's it's more a matter of at the start of the game in in your early levels what do you think is going to be the most useful to you, and True. obviously using you know stim packs and rad and radix and rad away intelligence is going to be incredibly useful. You can get away with having a low charisma. You can get away with having a low carry weight at those early levels. But eventually, as you want to get those other perks, you can. But the question to ask here, yeah, again, in my opinion, what's going to help you out at the start of the game? Because eventually, you're going to be able to unlock everything. That's the way Fallout 4 is going to be. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Well, that's a that was. See, these are the discussions I want to have when we talk about the the special videos. But like, for fuck's sake, these past like four weeks, like everyone just like, oh well, you know, yeah, yeah it's, it's cute. Pretty, it's pretty cool. It's a cute video. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, all right, that's great. How about you talk about what happened in the video? <laughs> I hate these guys. Fuck these um, guys. Uh, anyways next piece of news is uh i don't even want to call it news but it's just like wow this is actually surprising because we all shit on them but twitch plays has uh completed fallout 3 this week well done well done they did it yeah yeah it's 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 kind of like a bastardized version of twitch plays because obviously there, there's no way that you could do it in the original ways that pokemon was done because that was like you know you had the democracy and then anarchy and even though, like, typically you, you would go to democracy when people were stuck, generally the game was anarchy, but that's not how uh, Twitch Plays Fallout 3 worked, and that's not how Twitch Plays Dark Souls worked. It was like, alright, the screen would literally stop, and then wait for a command input, and then it will start again, and then it will start again. And, and that made for a bit more boring gameplay, in my opinion, but eventually, obviously, they were going to get it done, because that's the way the system was built up. So how does this system work? I, I, don't, I don't get this, like... You described it one time, but, like, it's, when it's anarchy, does one person take control? So, okay, so I'll, I'll go back to Pokemon, like, Twitch Plays Pokemon where it started. So, initially, because of how simple the controls for Twitch Plays Pokemon were, it was literally anyone can input into the comment section and say, go up, left, down, press A, B, start, whatever, and it would just okay. feed all of that through. It got to the stage where people <laughs> would just genuinely get stuck at certain areas. Like, there was one epic time where we couldn't get up ledges like that that was so funny because we we, kept, we got stuck on the ledges so he introduced it could have been then it could have been earlier but he introduced the democracy and an, an, anarchy combat so what, what, the concept is the word i was thinking of and then it was like all right so in anarchy mode it operates as it originally did everyone inputs their commands but then there's like a voting system and every time that a vote comes up people can choose whether to go to democracy or anarchy and when it went to democracy it's like, all right, every 30 seconds, people vote on the on the input command that should go in. 
and then the top one, if it's left, for example, the character will go left. That is exactly how Twitch, at least from my knowledge, that's how Twitch plays Fallout 3 and Dark Souls worked. There was no anarchy. I think it was anarchy initially, but they weren't getting anywhere. So they just had like a permanent uh, democracy mode where the game would freeze every so often and then people would vote on the on the next input and then that command would be fed through. So it mm. was like, eventually they were going to get it done because the system was, was designed to be able to be completed eventually because people know the game and they can know, you know, the, the command that should be inputted next. But it made for less free-flowing because in Pokemon, it was complete anarchy, but you could still kind of get it done, even in anarchy mode, because the game inputs were so much simpler and the games were so yes. much simpler. But that's a long-winded explanation of what I think it is. Okay. Mm. That's interesting. I, I, I just... I never understood the concept yeah. of Twitch plays or, like, the, like... I, I mean, okay, here's how I view Twitch plays, okay? Like, it's a cool idea, but, like, for me personally, if you want to play a video game, you have the choice between starting up your own system, hmm. whatever it be, hmm. or going on Twitch and putting in <laughs> things into the chat. It's... You know, and I'm sitting there thinking, like, I would rather spend my time playing the actual games than going on Twitch... <laughs> <laughs> and trying to input commands to, to do this ridiculous task. I mean, I understand that. Or rather, I don't understand. I'm, I'm assuming, and my assumption could be wrong, but most of these people are probably, like, of the age of, like, 10 to 13. Or people with, like, a lot of free time on their hands. That, yeah, that, that maybe. just sit there. But it's it's like the community aspect. I mean, too. I can imagine it's something fun to do during class. Like, if I'm sitting there during class <laughs> and I don't want to listen to what my teacher says, because if you're a college student, Lone, you might agree to this, there are some classes you have where, like, oh, you, you know the lesson's going to be bullshit. Yeah. And, but you want to get your attendance credit. And so I'll just come in and I'll sit on my laptop. Dude, I did mock drafts for fantasy so much during <laughs> class. I'd sit there and pick players and, and, and write out my fantasy teams while I'm learning about social problems. I'm like, I don't give a shit. Like, <laughs> you really should be listening to this, Matty. <laughs> but, no, it's, it's interesting. Like, there are two aspects, probably. Like, there's one where it's the challenge of getting the game done. And then the second is the community thing. Like, you, if you actually sit there and look at the chat, people are talking with each other. They're fucking around. They're, people are trying to stuff up the play, playthrough, which makes things interesting. Yeah. Um, but again, it's one of those things where if I can't sit there, me personally, for an hour or two to, to see how things go. First of all, it's not that entertaining to sit there for a while. Um, Pokemon was a bit different because it was more nostalgia feels. But yeah. it, if you don't have as much time, it's typically you check ev on it every once in a while, see how they're going. You ask like, oh yeah, where are we stuck now? And then they'll tell you, then you'll leave. But there are obviously a core dedicated group of people that will stay there and get the game done. That's insane, man. Yeah, it's crazy. I mean, good, good on them because that's cool to say, but yeah. uh, damn. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, congrats to them. <laughs> yeah, not, not everyone's cup of tea, but pretty, pretty interesting concept. Our next piece of news, which is the uh, the headline loan, you know what I'm talking about. Yes, I Are do. you ready for this? Yes. Okay. Here we go. Here's the discussion. <laughs> Black Ops Three. What's up? Fallout Four for most anticipated holiday title of 2015. This was determined through a poll on GameSpot, which was taken from people ages seven to forty nine. How many people voted? Do we know? A good amount. Let me check. <laughs> Fuck Hold me. On. One moment. Okay, uh, do, do you know what this annoys? <laughs> I, 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 I have so I'm many things there. to bitch about, but we'll wait until we get you the... Go number. on, I'll, I'll, I'll... Okay, <laughs> if you have anything to say, go on. But right now, I'm scrolling through my tweets, and I shall find it. Okay, it, I'll, Okay. We'll, we'll start with the, the basic thing. Obviously, online polls like this can be coerced. It's probably a bad term to use, but a lot of the people that would vote on it are probably really hard, hardcore, diehard fans of these particular games. And... Because of the internet, it's even like kind of how Metacritic works. Oh, if wait, hold on. One thing, I was wrong. It's ages 7 to 54. Okay. Go on. Okay. It's like... Uh, the Zeta was collected from a survey of more than 4,800 gamers aged 7 to 54. Oh, so that's 4,800. That's tiny. That's a tiny between, sample size. Between August 24th and September 19th. Okay. So, um, so one, that's this a small was sample created, size. created by a research group, Nielsen, who had published the results of its annual, annual Nielsen game rank. Which lists the most sought after games. So it was Nielsen that did it, not GameSpot. Yes, it was it was promoted though. But like the reason this news blew up, like, okay, I, I, I use GameSpot a lot and um 
their articles usually average about like 50 to 60 comments. This one has 301. Okay, so it got pretty popular. It's a pretty popular mm. article. It got uh, 160 something retweets and like 200 something favorites. A lot of people responded to it. So it, it's regardless of I think the the number of people, although that does settle things down a bit in my eyes. Yeah. Uh, it's the fact that that headline exists that people <laughs> want to just let's just talk about that because people want to know that you know yeah. why is this why is this happening you know it may be a small sample size but you multiply that sample size the yeah. outcome might still be the same okay like we kind of have to accept that black ops is a bigger franchise than fallout or call of duty just in general it's obviously a bigger franchise and the kinds of fans that that game generates um are typically younger that's not a bad thing but they're typically younger and they're typically more passionate and vocal on the internet like someone like you or i maddie like we wouldn't go to this fucking poll and vote on it because we're like well whatever who cares but people like younger that like the game that are very passionate and that are vocal on the internet would know about a poll like this and it would go there and try and vote and try to get their game to the top of that list that's why i don't think it's really indicative of anything but again call of duty is just the, it's still very big. It's it's slowing down in recent years, but it's still very big. And I kind of expect to, Call of Duty to beat out Fly 4 in terms of sales. And that would kind of, I guess, confirm the anticipated nature of that game. But in terms of... <laughs> it's kind of annoying to see Call of Duty beat out Fly 4 because I think Fallout has had so much better marketing. I think Fallout is, is so much more of a promising game. And we haven't had a Fallout game in a while. But we've had yeah. Call of Duties for the past God knows how many years. So that's why people were a bit irked about it. That's why I was irked about it. But My my concern was this, is that it really wasn't like the number or the headlines. It's just that people are seeing Black Ops 3 beat out Fallout 4 for most anticipated holiday title. Now, if I'm a game marketer, and I'm just taking a simple look at this, I'm saying, huh, you know, regardless of the sample size, people are more excited for an annualized franchise yeah. than a game series that's taken its time being developed spent a lot of money in its budget, uh, you know, really took its time, held back for a while, and has in- enormous amounts of hype behind it, still can't beat out Call of Duty. Yeah. So if I'm a marketer, I think to myself, well, we could get away with annualizing our franchise and making more money, because if we do it right, we can get people hyped every year like Call of Duty does, and they could try that. And my fear with this was that, since this was such a big headline, since it got out there so much and so popular, I was thinking, what it looks like is just that these bad trends are being supported. If if you like, I said this on my Twitter. If you like Call of Duty, that's that's fine. But just remember, when you participate in these these polls, they're there for a reason to learn about the market and the true, crowd. True. And that when they're there, when they're seeing Call of Duty, an annualized franchise, beat out Fallout Four. Yes, in our eyes, you know, I don't want to spew this word out because I don't think I'm crazy mature. But as more mature fans, you know, you you sit there and you go, well, whatever. I'm comfortable knowing that I will enjoy Fallout Four more than Black Ops, yeah, and that's all that yeah, matters. Yeah. But then. You know, you see these marketers coming out and annualizing every fucking game franchise under the sun. People are like, why are you doing that? Well, this is partially why. They see the support for an annualized franchise. They see that it's beating out games that take the time to make something truly polished and good. And I'm not really bashing Call of Duty personally because I like Call of Duty. I can't lie. Yeah. Like, I end up picking it up every year just like everyone else just because it's that fun throwaway game that you, you just play. And honestly, I'll, I'll say this much. I think Black Ops is the best out of the, the oh, Call yeah, of Duty titles there. Agree, yeah. uh, when it comes to both story and multiplayer, I think Treyarch is the most forward thinking of the bunch. Yep. And yes, I am biased to say that because I, I love the Black Ops 1 and I love Black Ops 2. And I love the World at War, actually. So yeah, I do have a bit of bias behind that. But I, I still got to say that it just doesn't make sense when... Um, I'm not saying that Black Ops 3 doesn't add anything new, but when Fallout 4 is a true sequel, like yeah. a true... Yeah. It, moves forward black ops 3 really is you know it's still your your campaign oh hold on wait but if you don't buy it on ps4 and xbox one <laughs> no you don't even get a fucking campaign it's ten dollars cheaper because i guess their campaign is is worth ten dollars to them but um you know it's like black ops 3 doesn't take the, the steps forward from it i think what was the last one advanced warfare that fallout 4 takes forward with or fallout yeah fallout 4 takes forward with fallout 3 you know it, it's yeah yeah i see what you mean it's such a vast difference. It, it's uh, it's kind of like reinforcing bad behavior, right? In terms of annualizing and, and yeah. spitting out games that don't really push the boundaries or the limits, but kind of 
stick with what is good or what, what is popular and what works, and then they'll kind of add things around the edges. So it's a bit disheartening to think, well, something like Fallout 4, which is truly testing the boundaries. Like, we haven't seen the game, obviously, but from what we've seen, you know, it, it is truly trying to push things forward and, and innovate and actually, you know, create a game that is vastly different than the previous, but has improvements. Um, it's a, a, one of these grain of salt things, right? I hope that marketers that look at this and people that interpret data would understand that this is a small slice. It's, in my opinion, a kind of a, I don't want to say biased, but maybe a skewed poll because, again, passionate fans would, would go to this, like, who knows of Nielsen, by the way, and those ones that uh, will know of Nielsen, them. like, you'll, you'll have the passionate fans that go to that poll. And I bet you a bunch of Fallout fans were like, yeah, you know, we, we could easily go to this poll and vote, but many people wouldn't know about it. So, I don't know. Um, I, I hope they people, people take this with a grain of salt, at the very least. Hmm. What people watch, listen to, and buy, Nielsen. So, this is a, a website dedicated to polls, hmm. quite literally, uh, based off its headline. Yeah. But, oh, my God. Top 10. It literally says, The Hills is the top music single, and then Fallout 4 is the top game to buy next. I like the hills. That's a good. <laughs> is that the weekend? Yeah. This is actually a professional site. I can't lie. I'm actually pretty impressed by the presentation. No, I know. Like, I know it's a reputable firm. Like, don't get me wrong. But it's more. Oh uh, no, I'm just. I'm, yeah. I'm more so affirming for those out there listening yeah, who yeah. are like, "What the fuck's a Nielsen?" <laughs> like, I, I, I hear them come up again and again. You know, when you read news articles, you're like, "Oh yeah, this is based on a Nielsen report or whatever." But it's more that you know, it's still a lot of people wouldn't know about it, and I'm sure if more Full Life fans were knew about it and were as I guess passionate as Call of Duty fans were, then you know more, more more results would have gone to Fallout 4. But again, we can't deny that Call of Duty is a massive franchise. Even though it's yeah. annualized, even though it's not pushing the boundaries, it's still massive, and it has that support behind. In it. terms of uh, in terms of passion, though, I, I gotta say, man, that like I think the Fallout community is the most fucking passionate out there, man. Like yeah, they yeah, are yeah. fantastic. I. I'm not just saying, okay, you know, I am kind of just saying that because, not rather just saying, but I am saying that because I am a, a Fallout YouTuber, mm. but, and so are you, but, you know, like, they are so bad shit crazy at times, they are so fucking just, they, they this game is, th like, them, and it, it even comes down to the little things, I don't want to use myself as an example, but I did, like, the Fallout Shelter giveaway, you know, how Grand Staff gave us the codes, yeah. and I originally had the video titled as a message from Vault Tech. And people thought that the video was almost, like, so authentic that they got <laughs> mad because they thought it was a legitimate, like, promo yeah, video yeah. that I connected with Bethesda on. And they found out, oh, it's a Fallout Shelter giveaway. And they're like, fuck you. And, like, they got really pissed. And it was just like, well, you know. And they, they get fired up about everything is what I'm saying. Like, that in a scheme of things, like, tomorrow will happen. This will be a thing of the past. But it, it's such a, you know, a tiny thing that they, the Fallout fans just get fired up about everything. And they're always there, whether it's backing each other up or, or you know, supporting each other and stuff. You know, they, they know how to just gang up and, and get involved in stuff. And it's awesome. Um, and what I'm saying by that is that uh, I I could ar I think there would be a good argument made if, if you could say Fallout's community is more passionate than Call of Duty. I think Call of Duty is more popular. And I don't like to use the word casual, mm. but I think that's kind of what it is. It's, it's a... And not even casual, it's a good pick up and play. This Call of Duty is a great first video game. It's simple. Yeah, yeah. This is what you do to aim, this is what you do to shoot, this is how you move. That's all you need to know. Fallout, on the other hand, is this is how you aim, this is how you shoot, this is how you move, you have to learn how your quest markers go. This is the settlement system, this is the weapon crafting system, this is a big open world, this is a radiation storm, this is a fucking death claw run, um, you know, shit like that. So, I think in the terms of uh respective markets i think it's an unfair comparison as well they're both first person shooters sh sure but yeah. i mean i, I you think know they're there are kind of when i refer to passion i think there are def different definitions of passion when you look at call of duty and fallout 4 or, or fallout so with call of duty again i see the fans being typically younger and then their passion is more defending the game and, and going on these 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 polls so that call of duty wins stuff like i could see that happening with fallout fallout obviously they're just as passionate if not more passionate about their their particular game but i see the passion in more in terms of again as you said supporting each other talking about the game you know discovering every single aspect about the game defending it where necessary but i don't see that passion being kind of oh there's an online poll about you know 
which mo- is the most anticipated game. Let's all go there and try to get Fallout to win. I see Call of Duty fans doing that more so. I think Fallout fans will be more content with saying, we know that this game is pushing the boundaries, it's innovating, so we're content with that. But Call of Duty fans need that kind of... And, and this is a huge generalization, but I can see them typically needing more of that satisfaction, knowing that, yes, Call of Duty's at the top of the list. It's the most sold game. Blah, blah, blah. It's sense. better than Fallout. But I think Fallout fans are a bit more content with, we know that this game is more in- innovative. It's changing the game. It's pushing the boundaries. And we don't need an online poll to tell us that. I think that's the mm. distinction. Yeah, exactly. No, that's, that's perfectly said. That's mm. exactly what I was thinking. Because, you know, they... they I think it, ah, God, I hate to use the word once again, but like, I think, I think it just comes down to almost a sense of maturity, yeah, you know, like, yeah. and, you and know, we've all been there. We like, we've all yeah. had our Call of Duty phases and we're all Absolutely. that age. And, so yeah, yeah, if you're like a eight, yeah, I'd say if like you're 17 to like 20 you, you, and you played Call of Duty growing up and you know exactly what Lone and I are talking about yeah. where you had your days where you made your Call of Duty commentaries and your montages or you just went for cool sniper shots and shit. Yeah. And you know, that was your life. That was your life. And I, I kind of wish Noah was here to, to attest to that because me and him would have a big splurge fest on how we ran Call of Duty channels. And that's all we did. <laughs> so, like I said, I, I know the kind of person I was back then. I was not the closest thing to mature back then. Oh, of course so not. Yeah, yeah. I'm not even saying I am now. But you know, <laughs> uh, I, I, I guess I, I'm not just saying what I am is the entire fan base. But I think that generalization is fair to make, in my opinion. It, it's... Yeah, yeah, it's an easy access game that everyone gets into, yeah. and that means that little kids are going to come in. So it's 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 a hot topic, and we we could honestly be here all day talking about it. But yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Anyway, we'll just move on to the next bit. Um, <laughs> another piece of interesting news dropped. But that's a surprise. The Fallout fandom when they announced Fallout 4's PC specs. Ah, oh, this is a good one. Yeah. yeah. So I'm going to read off the specs. Uh. Heads up, Lone and I, we know our PCs, but we're not, like, crazy computer experts. <laughs> Just a heads up. Um, we can have a nice, simple discussion here, but if we don't go into the ins and outs of our fucking motherboard, then, you know, apologize. Anyways, <laughs> the minimum requirements for Fallout 4, minimum, is either an operating system, 64-bit, by the way, of Windows 7, 8, or 10. Uh, as for your processor, it's got to be an Intel, or at least, rather, an Intel Core i5-2300 with 2.8 gigahertz, um, or an AMD Phenom 2 X4-945 with 3.0 gigahertz or equivalent. As for RAM, uh, random access memory, 8 gigabytes at a minimum, uh, 30 gigs of free hard drive space, and then when it comes to the video card, you don't need anything too beefy. Uh, An NVIDIA GTX 550 Ti, 2 gigabytes of video memory, or an AMD Radeon HD 7870 with 2 gigabytes of memory or equivalent. As for the recommended amount, once again, the operating system is the same. I'll say it again just in case you didn't hear me earlier. Windows 7, 8, or 10 64-bit operating systems required. Uh, I ugh, God, it's so hard to say this all without stuttering because it's so many numbers and shit. We're all judging uh, you, Matty. We're going. Uh, um, for the processor, so the recommended amount, Intel Core i7, 4790, 3.6 gigahertz, AMD FX 9590, 4.7 gigahertz, or equivalent. As for the RAM, once again, 8 gigabytes will get it done, and you also will have 30 gigabytes of free space on your hard drive for this, so that should be easy for everyone. And then finally, the graphics card is once again not a giant asking price. It's an NVIDIA GTX 78 or 780 with 3 gigabytes of memory and AMD Radeon R9 290X, 4 gigabytes of memory or equivalent. <sighs> okay, I can breathe. <laughs> oh, man. Um, uh, I think uh, the, the first thing that I noticed, and it's because me personally with my PC, I meet every fucking aspect of that aside from the CPU. The CPU, for me, I've got a... What is it? i7-4770. Um, and 3.4 gigahertz, and then that one recommended it's i7 three fucking hell i7 4790 <laughs> at 3.6 gigs, and, and I thought that was the most beefiest aspect of it. I think it's kind of high, but obviously with recommended specs, they're always overshooting. 
um, mm-hmm. to say, you know, this is what you really need to get it to run right. But there's a spectrum. Yeah. You go anywhere in bet- between. You can go above that if you want to. I honestly think, though, like, even if you don't miss meet those minimum specs and you slightly miss them, you would still probably be able to play the game at lower 30 if you want, which is probably still going to get you a better result than console. So they're, they're interesting. As for me, for everyone likes to know what my PC is. Um, anytime I'm streaming, I get the question. So uh, for me, in the terms of running this game, my processor is an Intel uh, i7 580 tw- or 5820K uh, CPU at 3.30 gigahertz. And the reason I went for such insane processing power is because of video making. It, it helps a lot. Yeah. Um, also, obviously, with the games moving forward. Uh, for RAM, I went overboard. I went with 32 gigs because, you, you know, people... <laughs> No, people were like, yo, what the fuck are you doing, man? Games don't even use 16. What does Battlefront require? 16 gigabytes of RAM as a recommended amount. Thank you very much. <laughs> Give it a couple of years, you'll be using 16 gigabytes as the standard. Trust me. Um, as for graphics card, I have an NVIDIA GeForce GTX or GeForce GTX 980 Ti. Nice. Which is, yeah, thank you. Um, <laughs> which is, which is uh, a pretty, pretty top of the line one, I'd say, next to the Titan. Yeah. And then what was the other things we needed? I uh, have Windows 10, RAM. Okay, yeah, that's it. So for me personally, I can run this thing fine. But a lot of people want to know, do they? is the recommended specs there? Do you think that's for like running the game on Ultra and, you know, 60 FPS? Or are these recommended just to get the game running? It's hard to say. I mean, I think obviously minimum is to get the game running, probably low, probably 30 FPS, I reckon. Mm-hmm. But that's, a, that's obviously a guess. With the recommended, I it's hard to say whether that's like the highest setting. I don't think it's the highest settings across the board, 60 FPS. I think recommended it's more relatively high um, settings, maybe a few more advanced settings like whatever kind of, you know, post-processing they have or whatever it is. And it, you get 60 FPS out of that at a minimum. Um, but I, I, it's hard to say whether that's all of the settings maxed out. I don't think so. I, I think if you're going to run this game all maxed out, you're probably going to need a bit more, a bit higher than the recommended. That's just my opinion. But I agree. I, it's, it's hard, I think it's hard I, when they don't define what recommended is. But anyway. Yeah, it, it's tough to say because I think the processing, that looks like something you'd need for like max settings, in my opinion. Like, yeah, that's it's a, high. That's a, it's a high processor. A, Fuck me. Yeah, that, that's a top of the line processor. But as for RAM, you know, that's the same for both minimum and recommended, which I, I was a bit surprised about. A lot of people were like, what? Like, why would you expect 16? And my reason was just... You know, I figured if Battlefront could use it, I understand it's a totally different game. But I figured, you know, Todd Howard always talks about how RAM, they're a studio that needs RAM and that maybe they push it forward a few steps. Yeah. But then, you, you, in my opinion, when, you know, you look at the recommended, uh, NVIDIA GTX 780, uh, I know three gigabytes of video memory is quite a bit. Um, and even with the Radeon R9 uh, 290X, they said four gigabytes of video memory. I don't know if they're also recommending that for, for modding as well. Because I know that for visual mods, yeah. you do need a good amount of visual, or uh, for, for you need a good amount of video. Yeah, there you go. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, for me personally, when I look at the recommended amount and I look at that video card, I think it's surprisingly low. And Fallout 4, yeah. you've seen the uncompressed trailer, or if you haven't, uh, you can find it online. You're gonna have to torrent it. I'm not trying to promote that, but that's the only way you can get it without having the compression of a YouTube video. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, uh, in my opinion, though, I think that uh, Fallout 4 is a very good-looking game, and that I was very surprised to see that the the video card didn't demand all that much. Yeah, um, yeah. But seems that the the really only needy part of this game is like you need a good processor. Yeah, I think it would have been people would have been taking a step back if Bethesda had said, "All right, you need a 970 as a recommended because those <laughs> yeah. are the you know the the newest line that are out." Um, yeah. It's hard to say though. Like I don't know what kind of benchmarking they would have gone through to say, all right, you need this kind of um, graphics card, but then in terms of the the CPU, it's a bit higher. Like, it if you were building a PC, put it this way, and I and I and I did this in a video yesterday. If you were building a PC, you wouldn't build those specs exactly to say that. Mm-hmm. Like, if you were going to get an i7, you don't get a 7080 Ti, you get a 980 or 970 or something like that. Like, it, yeah. it doesn't make you sense. Get something to match. And, and yeah. you go on most online forums nowadays. And people are still saying, you don't need an i7, get an i5. Um, and it's it's just weird. It, it, it's so hard to say about it. I never understood. And maybe it's because you and I make videos. I never understood why people told, like why people recommend go for the i5. I think i7's top of the line. Oh, you can't get any yeah. better than that. So I, I wonder why people recommend that. 
uh, you go back a step. I, I say if you can get i7, go for it. Um, the price difference isn't that much either. It's like in the realm, like less than a hundred dollar price difference between i5 and yeah. i7. Which is a lot of money, but it's it's worth that step. It's one hundred and ten percent worth that step because it's for multitasking and uh, especially when you're a gamer, having a good processor. You can tell is is totally worth it. But we we can um, get into a discussion about PC gaming. Like I've been jaded with my PC. Like I, I had no idea about PC gaming initially. So what I was like, all right, I'm gonna buy a what's it called, small form factor PC. And I was like, you know, it's going to be built for me. Everything's done. If I need to get things fixed or whatever, I just take it back to the shop and it's all packaged, right? It's not different components. So I thought that that was a good idea. But then I realized that, all right, shit, my GTX 760 with 1.5 gigs VRAM, it's just not going to cut it nowadays. So I had to try and upgrade my um, GPU and the, or the graphics card, sorry. And then... The problem with that, though, is because it's a small form factor, I was only able to get a 970 that was not longer than 9.5 inches. Like, it, it, I fucked mm. myself with it. And I would always I recommend, have, look, yep. there is no such thing as future-proofing. It's, it's impossible to future-proof. You can proof for, like, four or five years. But yeah, that's what the I best thing to do, and, and I'm not just saying this, like, because, like, the best thing to do is to build your own PC. Honestly, it is because you get your own custom case or whatever it is. You can change components down the line. You know that you're not pigeonholed in any shape or form. And when there are games like, for example, like Battlefront that requires 16 gigs of RAM or when there are games that require a higher graphics card or if there is a new graphics card, you can change it straight away. But at least when you're initially buying your PC, try and go to the higher end even if you are spending a little bit more because you're delaying that upgrade process by a number of years if you do that mm -hmm. uh, i'm i'm looking up just for a sake of comparison this is kind of my go-to comparison game uh, i'm just gonna look at the minimum and maximum requirements of the witcher 3 on the pc mm. uh let's just talk about recommended uh 64-bit yeah. piece uh operating system windows 7 or 8 yeah um it doesn't mention anything about 10. yeah uh as for a processor an Intel CPU core i7 3,773.4 gigahertz, so it's a little bit weaker um, in terms of processing. Yeah. And for its graphics, NVIDIA GeForce GTX 770 again. It was a bit lower, yeah. And then RAM is only 6 gigabytes. Yeah. And then 40 gigs of disk, disk space. Yeah. So th that doesn't surprise me, though, like because I know that as, as games are being created, developers are getting the new tech... They're, they're able to increase things around the edges. And it, it, it's weird to say. And, and it's it's not a one-to-one -one comparison. Like, comparing Witcher with Fallout is like comparing apples and oranges. They're, they're different games. And I'm sure at the time when um, CD Projekt Red, I think it is, that they released those specs, they were appropriate for Witcher. But Fallout has had more development time. So it's been able to see, like, new tech that has come out around the edges. And so it's upped the ante just a little bit. But again, they always, usually typically developers will overshoot with a recommended. So maybe Bethesda just thought it was a bit more safe to say, all right, we need a little bit more here, a little bit more there for the recommended because the game I still think is going to be a bit bigger than Witcher. Also in, in terms of the way the world is maybe set up or something. I don't know, but it, yeah. it's very hard to say. Uh, since we were talking about Battlefront a little bit, I figured I'd read off its recommended specs. Um, it's saying that on Windows 10, 64-bit, um, or later, it's not even saying Windows 7 or 8, that's for minimum. Um, so I guess you can get away with either, rather. Yeah. Uh, as for the processor, uh, Intel i5 600, 6600 or equivalent. Uh, me memory is 16 gigabytes of RAM, 40 gigs of free Fuck hard drive space. Gigs. Yeah, I know. Um, as for an NVIDIA card, it's a GeForce GTX 970, 4 gigabytes of memory Holy or fuck, higher. Holy that's high. As a recommended? Yeah. Holy shit. Yeah. It's a it's a beautiful game. I'll get into it later. But uh, as for AMD, it's uh, Radeon R9 290, four gigabytes of memory, which is one of the more top of the line cards. Um, and that's it. So yeah, like I mean, uh, every game is different, obviously, as we can tell here. But in my opinion, I feel that I don't know if Bethesda's file compression plays into a factor here because now we know that um, they said for for consoles uh, in the article they released the PC specs with that consoles will only need. Uh, 28 to 35 gigabytes of memory and we see now that pc will need about 30 gigabytes of memory space hmm. free so do you think that part of this is like in some sense file compression where you think like maybe since they really packed this game tight that maybe it, it it allows it to flow properly and that that's why it doesn't need these 
I don't know how to word it. These this crazy RAM asking price like Battlefront has. Well, it's, this... it's interesting though because with with Battle like with Fallout Four on console, it's 1080p, 30 FPS on both PS4 and Xbox One. With Battlefront, the beta at least, I think Xbox One was 720p yeah. and PS4 was 900p. I think right. that game is just more graphically demanding. You look at those videos and 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 this I know I love Fallout, but you look at those videos and Battlefront looks better. Uh, I'm not gonna lie, the game looks more visually pleasing. Fallout mm. has a different kind of graphical style, but Battlefront it has the more clarity, has the more the the, the better visuals in my opinion. So I'm not surprised yeah. that on console and on PC. The, the specs are a little bit more higher for Battlefront. Um, but again, it also comes down to optimization. And there was an article that came out recently about why Fallout 4's file size is actually relatively small. And that's because Bethesda are really efficient at optimizing things. Like, you know, they have a pool of assets with their, which they'll use across the board. So they don't need all of these new assets. The way the world's actually generated, obviously, you know, from a distance, things aren't procedurally generated as much as they are up, up front. And I think Bethesda is just really good at that. So you, you don't need those, that higher RAM at any one time. And I think Battlefront's different because they're... It's, it's, it, again, apples and oranges. But Battlefront is a, a more visually pleasing and I think more um, intense game in those obviously combat-heavy moments where you're going to need a lot mm. of... There are a lot of fl things flying around. You've got bullets, you've got fucking flyers, whatever the fuck they are. So I, I think in that sense... <laughs> what? Hold on, what? <laughs> like, you know, you have like the, the, the jet fucking things i don't know what they're called but everything's like flying around fly wings, yeah wings. fly wings I, I don't i'm not a star wars fan but i've seen the video ah, boo. yes but you, you know what i mean like you look at those combat heavy scenes and they're more intense than fallout so you're going to need more ram at those times to maintain your fps true but now that you mentioned co combat heavy scenes it, it reminds me of what they described a uh the the quakecon demo where they said like there was the raiders and the, the the ghouls, and there was the Brother to Steel, and then the Vertibird came in, and then but I see, the protagonist I see picked up a, being a around fat man and shot a behemoth. Yeah. I was just like, what? But that's crazy. I bet you, though, no, I bet you that that's a scripted event. Like, that must be a one-off scripted event, yeah. and it's probably going to be one I swarm think... of enemies come in, and then another different swarm come in after you kill them. But with Battlefront, it's just the clusterfuck of everyone trying to kill each other. Yeah. I think, I think also that, uh, I think that, I think the raiders and the ghouls probably could naturally happen, but I think the player could call in the the Brotherhood of Steel. I think the the scripted part was really the the behemoth. Um, I think yeah. everything else might have been a little bit natural. Um, but that's that's interesting. I mean, in my opinion, uh, I think a lot of people's PCs can get this game up and running. Um, you just probably need to beef up your processor. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Uh, does it does have a considerable asking price because it's. Um, I for for the record, I spent about two thousand dollars on my PC, um, just as an upgrade for the next generation of gaming. I'm not some spoiled brat, but um, <laughs> you know, I spent Mom, a lot of money. Mom, need on a new PC. <laughs> <laughs> I spent a new, I spent that much on a new PC and my processor, which I had to make sure I got a really good one for you know my videos and stuff. Yeah, you know, is it's a, above and beyond what I need for this game, but it's still cuts it a little bit close for the recommended amount when it comes to processing and fallout 4 True. so that is a big asking price in that sense but as for uh everything else man i, I think everyone should be okay uh that yeah, you ha in my opinion having a lower graphics card is good because um i know that the processors can be more expensive but some of these graphics card mans they run for some fucking insane prices to and so well, in my opinion if you want to you buy your sorry if you want to buy a 780 I ti you're looking at around 400 bucks that yeah, if you want to buy an i7 4790 3.6 gigahertz or more, I think that's 160 minimum. I'm not, I'm not too sure. Yeah, I'm actually curious because I want to give them an accurate, yeah, accurate but price here because I know sometimes they can they can go for a lot of money if I remember. Yeah. Um, I think if you go like Newegg or something, you'll be able to. Get uh, it. yep, I I was right. They're about like 300. Holy shit, I didn't realize. Yeah, I was going to say, I thought processing was like, I didn't want to say anything yet, but yeah. Okay. And that's for the minimum. That's for the minimum, for or, or for the recommended for Fallout 4. That's but interesting. Like the, the minimum amount of, of processing that they're saying you should get when it comes to the recommended list. Um, so yeah, I mean, if, you, if you're split between whether or not you want to upgrade your graphics card or your processor, based off the games Bethesda makes, I don't think you're going to get much benefit upgrading your graphics card. I think you're gonna get a lot more benefit if you upgrade your processor. It might be a little more money, which sucks, 
but I think it's worth it personally. Yeah. Uh, their games are processor and, and RAM intensive. They're not graphical powerhouses. A reason some people were upset though uh, is that it's because Skyrim you could run that so easily, you know. Yeah, but that's uh, that, like that was such old an old Dell, game. Like, yeah, I know. But on my Dell XPS eighty five hundred, like which is a pre made Dell PC I got for nine hundred dollars, it was okay. But like had like a Radeon seventy five seventy, like it was really. Uh, the processing was good. That, yeah, that was about it. But yeah. I could run Skyrim 60 FPS ultra settings without any issues, record gameplay for as long as I wanted and be fine. Hmm. So I think that's another reason why people are a little bit taken aback by the specs. You know, they feel that, well, you know, I could run Skyrim perfectly fine. Granted, that's, like you said, a, a much older game. Yeah. But, you know, I guess some people were maybe expecting that same ease of access, but I think with the way games are moving forward today, you, you just can't expect that as much no, until, like, a couple of years into a new console generation. It, then, you yeah. know, when things are solidified, games are kind of all running on that same, I don't want to say level, different games are more or less ambitious than each other, but uh, yeah. some of them will call for different ones, but usually they're all kind of a streamlined, you know, you should have around this type of specs for now, yeah. for the next couple of years, and, and you should be okay. And I think what people need to realize as well, though, is that, when you're making a game for PC, it is considerably harder because you need to try and get this game working on all of these different graphics cards, on all of these different, um, well, it's just Windows in this case, but sometimes different OSs. There are so many different variables that are changing across people's PC builds. With consoles, it's just the one fucking thing, and they can look at optimizing that to a T. That's typically why, you know, development is easier on a console, and that's typically why with PC, maybe they haven't op- they couldn't optimize, like possibly we could not expect them to optimize the PC specs across the board, which is also typically why minimum and recommended specs are a bit overshot, because, look, they, they can't do the same level of optimization as they can do on the consoles, because the consoles, they're closed, they know what they're working with, they can test it out exactly. With PCs, it's different. So they're kind of like, all right, we, we can't optimize as much. We're going to have to overshoot with these recommended specs. Hmm. It's possible. Yeah. Anyways, that's uh, <laughs> that's our extended thoughts on mm. what you should do with your specs. Uh, if you have to upgrade, I'd say you shouldn't have to be spending too much money because most standard gaming PCs come with 8 gigabytes of RAM. Yeah. Far more memory than 30 gigabytes. And the only thing you're going to be really spending some big bucks on is the processor. So I think if you have about a $1,000 PC... You should be okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's, I think, you know, and that's, that's a, I know for a lot of people, $1,000 is quite a lot of money. It is. I'm just <laughs> saying, though, that, that for, in the terms of gaming PC, that's about the standard, yeah. you'd say, you know, 1000 to 2000 Around that. Some people spend like 3000 because when I was looking for the, uh, the Battlefront specs, the first article I saw was from Forbes was, I have a $3,000 PC and I'm playing Battlefront on the PS4. <laughs> I, I don't know where we put that three thousand dollars, man. But I'm I have a two thousand dollar PC and I'm playing Battlefront on the PC. So suck it. Fuck it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> let's move on to our next segment. That's our Bethesda news roundup. Now we have what we're playing and our favorite gaming news. Mm, so I haven't been playing video games. So if people don't know, I have been busy for the past three weeks. I did a um, presentation at EB Expo for Bethesda. And that's taken my time. So I haven't fucking played video games. I don't even know what's like in the news lately. What is in the news, Maddie? Do you know? <laughs> uh, well, I mean, I think the biggest piece of news, which is what I was going to talk about when I'm playing this week, is probably the battle from beta. That's what everyone's really talking about this week. Uh, this wasn't a really low gaming week, uh, gaming news week. You know, a lot of things were out. Uh, for my personal gaming news, I want to talk about a game that launched recently. That's, I think, a genius idea, man. Um, so I guess I'll go. Uh, Lego Dimensions. I'll start off with my gaming news, man. <laughs> Lego Dimensions released this week. Now, I'm gonna, I went to GameStop, okay? I went to GameStop today to buy the Uncharted collection because I, I really want to play those games through. And I'm there, and I look to my left, I see all these Lego boxes, and I'm like, oh shit. Like, and he saw the glimmer in my eyes. Like, I was just, I was rolling back Kidding the, the timeline store. here. Yeah, I was like, oh my god. I'm like looking at them, seeing level packs, fun packs, team packs. I'm like, what is this? You know, because I just see Legos, and I'm like, I, I love Legos, man. I love them to this day. Uh, like most kids who, who grew up around our ages, you know. I don't know if you played with Legos a lot. Do they sell Legos in Australia? Of course, they sell Legos in Australia. I don't fucking know, man. <laughs> Are they crazy inflated prices? Because like here they're insanely overpriced, and I don't know if that's like 
Like that has to carry over. Oh, in of course it does. I mean, it carries over because of currency and shipping. So yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So I'm sorry for that. You probably spent like a hundred dollars on what we spent fifty on. <laughs> uh, Pretty much. So yeah, that sucks. But anyways, back to Lego Dimensions. So I'm like looking at this. This guy sees the glimmer in my eyes. He's like, he's like, pretty cool, huh? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> what is this? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What is this? And I, I'm like, what is Lego Dimensions? He's like, all right. So he, he points at Skylanders and Disney Infinity. I'm like, oh, fuck. I'm like, what am I getting into here? He's like, all right. So you see these games here. I'm like, yeah. He's like, you know, how you like take these figures. And he points at the Amiibos as well. He's like, you take those figures. You can like import them into your game. It's like the, the toys brought to life genre, I guess is what they call it now. Hmm. He's like, you know how those work and stuff? I'm like, yeah. He's like, that's what they do with Lego Dimensions. I'm like, that is so smart. He's like, yeah. But, you know, here's the catch, is that you actually build the Legos when you get them in these sets. So not only are you playing a game, but you're actually taking a flashback to your childhood. <laughs> so he's like, yeah, you know, you, you, you build them in this set, and the game has in-game instructions. So it doesn't come with the instruction booklets of old. It's actually all in-game, so you build it step-by-step -step with the game. That's and cool. then it comes with, like, levels in these games, in these, these packs. Like, there's level packs you can buy. Like, there's a Simpsons one. There's a Ghostbusters one coming out, I think. There's a, a Back to the Future one. Uh, there's the, the main story campaign thingy, which is about, like, 12 hours, they said. Um, and each one of these comes with, like, their levels. And as you play these levels, you unlock new ways to build these things that the packs come with. And so I'll complete a level, and I'll be like, all right, you see this Scooby-Doo mystery machine? Yes, they have a Scooby-Doo team pack, and I was so happy when I saw that. And you can learn how to build a mystery machine into something completely different. And then you can put it into the game. Because what it comes with is like the starter pack. And you build this portal. And whenever you, you know, it has a little like disc on the bottom of all these standard Lego figures. And you plug them into this, this portal. And it puts them in the game. And then I'm like sitting there like dumbfounded watching it just fucking explain all this stuff to me. Because this is such a good idea, man. They're taking actual Legos. Like the actual, okay, Skyland is fucking dumb. Disney Infinity is, like, <laughs> passable, but, like, if there's one game that should be, like, a toys brought to life genre, it's either the Amiibos, because, you know, they're, like, plushes, they're figures, you know, and essentially Super Smash Brothers is figures brought to life, you know, the, yeah, the yeah. toys brought to life, because in the the first one, the 64, that's what they did, you, yeah, you saw, like, the, the figures scene. drop down, yeah. yeah, and they came to life and started beating the shit out of each other, <laughs> uh, and Lego Dimensions, I think, stands in there as, like, this should exist, you know, it's a Great money maker, first of all. It's like a hundred dollars for the starter pack. And by the way, I'm not doing like a promo here. Like I'm just saying I'm telling you guys what I was told at GameStop. Because I thought this was like the most exciting thing ever. I'm sitting there like, oh my god. To the point where I literally, after buying something, went over and started picking up all these boxes. I'm a 20-year-old man. <laughs> picking up all these boxes and looking at the back, like smiling and like reading what it comes with and hanging it back up. And they're picking up a new one. Like I'm like this kid who got 20 bucks for allowance and uh, has it to spend on, on Legos. And it, it's such a cool idea. And like, I, I thought it was a really cool step forward in the toys to life genre. But I, I yeah, that's like my favorite news because it came out this week and I, I, hadn't, I didn't look up anything on it. I'm like, ah, stupid thingy. But, you know, I, I saw it in the store. I love I how exciting like, oh, you're getting. My, my. <laughs> That's yeah. It, I ah uh, okay. I'm done. Um, <laughs> uh, if you have any any news that can top that, feel no, free. No, I don't. I don't have news that can top that because I'm not as excited <laughs> as this. But I, there was something that this week I thought was interesting. So the PS4 is going to get a fifty dollar price cut, which I think is interesting because even now they're still outselling the Xbox One, which is you know it, I think. Ow! I, I know. I know. <laughs> I know. But people are fucking insane over the PS4. It's crazy. And, and it's not like the Xbox One is selling bad. They're, they're, they're both selling relatively well. If The only consoles that's not really selling well is the Wii U. But PS4 mm. is just killing it. And now they're going to drop it by $50, for, obviously, for the holiday season. Uh, there, there's no way. And, and, and what's his name? Phil Spencer talked about this. He was like, yeah, he we're, it. we're unsure. We're un he called it. But he's like, we're unsure that Xbox One is ever going to catch up the PS4. And I don't think that it's ever going to happen. It's, they're way too far ahead, and they're still selling more at a more expensive price. I, don't, I just don't... That's what I'm saying. I don't get it. Like, Xbox has been under them 
Yep. You know, I'm not. By the way, I, I guess when I said how, I, I sounded like I'm like an Xbox lover and a fuck Sony. Yeah. I think the only reason like I have like a grudge against Sony is number one, you don't support the fucking Vita. Suck me off. <laughs> all right? That's that's fucked. Here we go. That bothers. Me. <laughs> but yeah, I I would go on forever on that, but I'll spare everyone <laughs> that because we'll lose viewers as we speak. <laughs> but I don't get it. Like I feel like some Sony fans, some keyword, some. I'm not talking about the entire audience. Yep. I'm not trying to start problems, but. I really truly feel like they are just so like contradicted. They're like, oh fuck Microsoft, dude. They take their paycheck to just buy companies and then they buy <laughs> Street Fighter V and they buy this and they buy that. And there's so many people like, oh well shit happens, man. Yeah, but then when Microsoft buys a, 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 a timed exclusive, and I'm not saying it's okay, but it's timed, your so many fans are still gonna get it. Um they buy Tomb Raider temporarily. They're like, what the fuck, Microsoft? <laughs> Sinners, <laughs> disgusting. And I'm like what is wrong with you people? Like, do you not see your own company doing the same thing? Or are you just, like, blinded by fanboys? And that's that's one thing, like, I don't like is when people are blinded by, like, just being a pure fanboy of something. Yeah. And so, like, I, I mean, I personally don't get it. Because I think, and this is personal preference, I think Sony has a few good exclusives to offer. While I think Xbox One has a, a bunch, mm. you know. I, I can name off a few just right away. Like, Rare Replay, Halo Master Chief Collection. I don't give a shit what you say about it being broken. It's still yeah. four fully remastered games that are awesome with yeah. all the packaging yeah. and more. And then uh, Bloodborne, in my opinion. Gears of War as well. Like, Yeah. Oh, wait. I'm talking about PS4 when I said Bloodborne. That's what I was going to get to. Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, Sunset Overdrive. Uh, yep. You know, they, I... Killer Instinct. Love, like, <laughs> yeah. Killer Instinct is still, to this day... I, maybe next to Sunset Overdrive, it's it's debatable, but I think to this day, Killer Instinct is still like the best game on the Xbox One. Like mm. that shit is so yeah. fucking good. I, and oh, I'm gonna say this, and I, I'm not a fanboy. Look, I have an Xbox One, full disclosure. But from what I've seen, at the very least, Xbox One has better exclusives than the PS4. The PS4 is a bit lackluster, and literally, I think it was Yuhei Yushida, or the Shuhei, I don't know what the fuck your name is. Yeah, Shuhei. Shuhei, Shuhei Yushida. Yushida. He said... Can't not know his name if you follow Greg Miller, because he talks about him all the time. No, I don't follow Greg Miller, <laughs> but Shuhei Yushida, if that's how you pronounce it, he said himself that Sony need to get more <laughs> exclusives for the PS4. Yeah! So when he yeah. says that, please <laughs> shut the fuck up and listen to him. Because he's the boss, all right? And he knows what's up. You're so right on that part. I forgot I saw the headline. They're like, <laughs> Shuhei Yushida, like, like, president of Worldwide Studios of Sony, says, uh, we really need to step up our game in exclusives. I'm like, yeah. Yeah, you, you do. do. <laughs> like, no one gives... Okay, and I'll be fair. I'm being really, really harsh right now, but... Who cares that PS4 has all of these indie games? Honestly, people want AAA games. People like the big games. They like the big budgets. They like the cool, cool graphics, etc. And PS4 just does not have enough AAA exclusive games. Xbox One is yeah. dominating. Another thing that the Xbox One is dominating in is in terms of the actual software. We are always constantly getting updates. We're getting backwards compatibility. We're getting updates monthly. Like every week you go to Major Nelson's blog. He'll say we're doing this, this and that. PS4's updates, I think, are less periodic, and they don't add as many things way as less. Xbox One do does it, or not? It's way less. They yeah, just did a new go. one and added communities, which is a cool idea. It's like to get, like, fan groups on the PS4. Yeah. And, uh, but Xbox you know, One is, like, up. pushing out constantly. And they, and they have, like, forums where you can say what you want next in, in the Xbox One, and people vote on the most wanted features. And t a lot of the times, those get added. Like, right now, it's... We want background music to be able to play. Now, PS4 kind of has that with Spotify. But, again, it's not just that. It's all of these other features that Xbox One are rolling out onto the console. And I, I think they're always trying to say, you know, this, this is the better console in our opinion. It's not selling as much. But we have better exclusives. The, the operating system is better. Like, we have more features. And I don't know. I still don't understand why. It's probably just marketing. And it's probably just still bad blood from the whole DRM, whatever the fuck. I, I can't even remember Fucking what Xbox stupid. did want wrong. But... In any event, it's probably just you know marketing and all of that. But I still don't understand it's, how peaceful setting more. It's hilarious though because people hold on to that, and that's the reason a lot of people don't buy Xbox Ones. They're like, well, they're fucking stupid. They fucked up. But it's so funny because like they were so ahead of the game, it pissed people off because now everyone buys shit digitally. I still go get physical games, but I don't speak for everyone when I say yeah. that. I know a lot of people still go for the physical stuff, but a lot of people. A, don't have the time. B, it's more convenient to just download it. 
Yeah. And Microsoft's platform was going to be all about that. And it would have appeased to people nowadays, but people back then were not willing to accept such a new way of thinking. Mm. They were like, well, fuck you then. And I mean, I can agree to like the whole, you know, you always have to be connected to the internet. That bothered me. Yeah, you know, that, that, that was, was a bit shitty. Like you should be able to, you know, download games and then play them offline. Like that's that's fucking yeah. stupid. Especially if that's you have a little bad bit internet. Ridiculous. But I think the no, um I- the, the benefit of being on the Xbox One right now is because yes, they are so far behind in terms of sales, but that is just pushing Microsoft more to give us a better console. And I think Sony is resting on their laurels a little bit. And they're not pushing the AAAs. They're not pushing anything because why, why do they need to? They're selling like hotcakes. And I think Microsoft, they're trying to get back trust. They're trying to sell more consoles. So they're more, I guess, incentivized to get these new features, to get these new games. And I think we're benefiting from that. We're Obviously, it's competition. We're benefiting from it. That's what I was about to say. Yeah, yeah, I was going to say that it's kind of, in a sense, a good thing. Microsoft is underneath Sony because yeah. I'm not saying Sony's not trying, but that's what it looks like, in my opinion. They, they buy the exclusive DLC for third party. They make an exclusive once in a blue moon. This fall doesn't have a single Sony exclusive that I can at least think of. You can correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't mm. believe it does. Mm. It's just, you know, like, for example, it's all the third-party stuff in my eyes. It's the, the Star Wars Battlefront. It's the, uh, what, Destiny. It's the, I think, Metal Gear Solid, Destiny. maybe, you know? <laughs> it, it's it's a little it's a little ridiculous that they just rely on third-party because people are just buying shit anyway. So they're like, okay, we'll just be the face of these AAA games because we're not making any first-party games. And it sucks because Sony is, like, the, in my opinion, the king of exclusives. Like, yeah. Sly Cooper, Ratchet and Clank, Jack and Daxter, God are you of fucking War. kidding me? Yeah, like, God of War. It goes on, you know, and, and Microsoft did a good job climbing into that race and establishing themselves, but I think Sony kicked their asses when it came to PS2 and PS3. Oh, definitely. But now, like, definitely. Microsoft is, like, the underdog, and now they're trying to push themselves forward, yep. and they're doing a good job of doing so, but, like, Sony's just resting back instead of saying, like, Eh, they'll never catch up to us. Who gives a fuck? And maybe they won't, but like, still, like, don't you want to have some pride in your shit? I don't. No, yeah, that's a, that's a really good point. I honestly agree. And again, it's like resting back on their laurels. Why do we need to to push the boundaries? Like, it, I guess it's also like a mentality kind of thing. The fact that you know you're ahead, you know you still have to kind of release updates and improve your console around the edges. But when you know you're you behind, know you're doing something right. Yeah, yeah. Like you, but when you're behind, like Microsoft is, that's your concern. Like, you really need to distinguish your console from the competitors and improve it everywhere get these exclusives make it a really really good package we know that obviously ps4 is the stronger console and we know that's why you know triple a games typically sell more on the ps4 because it looks better and people want ps4s and they they i don't know why there is this obsession with graphics nowadays but there you go but i i think that xbox one is the better console aside from the hardware aspect at the very least Mm -hmm. yeah but um I guess we we went off a bit of a detour from Lego Dimensions to <laughs> console debates. Yeah. Uh, as for what we're playing, I, I skipped my bit. I know you said you're not playing games this week, but for me, mm. uh, this week I was very, very lucky. Very, very lucky. Let me grab my phone because I want to get this guy's exact name. Hold on. Give me one moment here. Okay. Uh, Michael Nordstrom of Dice. Uh, he reached out to me out of complete nowhere and was like, hey, Maddie, I listened to the Ham Radio podcast. I wasn't sure if you got an early access code. I know you're a big Battlefront fan. Here's a code to the beta on like Tuesday, like four, three days, wait, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, three days before the beta goes live. This guy, just because he's a fan of the podcast, uh, gave me an early access code. So Michael, if you're listening to this dude, thank you so much. We're glad <laughs> you're enjoying our stuff and I'm about to fucking fanboy over your game. Uh, I'm not doing that because he gave me the code, but I just got to say, man, thank you so much for for listening, and we appreciate it. Um, So that's what I've been playing this week, because I was very lucky to get it early where I've been playing it throughout the week. Hmm. Okay, I had my bit of skepticism, because I felt that this game was shallow. It looked a little shallow. You know, they didn't talk about the game necessarily, more so the graphics and the the sound. And um, that threw me off originally. During E3, they're like, yes, we, we are building this authentic universe. We love Star Wars. And I'm like, okay, I don't care. Show me the game. <laughs> and then I played the game. And I, I started to get it. And it sucks because it's one of those things that to play it, even as me, 10 years or 10, 15, 13 years long being a Battlefront fan, hmm. and I had to play the game to get it. Um, sucks because I know that not a lot of people are going to understand it until they touch the game. But the 
Dice was right about one thing, is that that authenticity, I can understand now why they're pushing it, because when you play the game, and people who have actually played the beta can attest to that statement, it makes a difference, dude. Mm. You are there. It's nuts. Turn on that surround sound, kick back, like, play on a fucking big screen if you can. This game is so real. And, like, when they say we want to bring your battles to life, that's what I... That, that's what they do. It, it, it's so insanely believable. You know, whether I'm yeah. playing on Hoth and the Walker Assault or a Drop Zone on Solus, uh, which is actually a, a brand new planet that they never uh, explored in the Star Wars universe. Um, it, it's it's just insane. Like, the explosions are so authentic to the movies. They're, they're just parallel. The, the laser blasts, the, you know, everything. The, the scuffs on the, the Stormtroopers' armor or, you know, the way these uh, Rebel Troopers look. It's so real, and it's engrossing. From game one to, like, I've played, like, fucking, like, eight hours of this beta now. A beta, by the way. Yeah, I yeah. haven't played a beta this much since Battlefield 3, which I loved to death. Battlefield 3 is one of my favorite shooters ever. Yeah. It, it's such a good game. I, I love Battlefield. Battlefield Comp Bad Company 2 was good as well. Um, and, you know, I haven't played a beta this much since that game, so I, that... That, in my opinion, if you value my opinion as well, instills a lot of confidence in this game where, you know, usually I'll play a beta and I'll, I'll pull back a little bit. I'll pull myself off because I don't want to ruin the game for myself. But I love what's in the game so much that I know I'm not going to ruin it for myself. Now, one of the concerns I had, like I said, was content. And I'm not going to say that it's fully there because there's about like eight or seven modes that I saw um, that'll be in the full game. And we got to access... Three of them technically, one was survival, which was a single player mode, but the other two were drop zone and walker assault, like I mentioned. And, um, you know, I'm a little bit nervous about that, but I don't think, I think it has enough game modes to have a, a lifeline. You know, uh, I think, I think seven to eight can get the job done. Um, I think Call of Duty sets the bar very high because they have like 40,000 fucking ways you can play the game. Um, but I, I think Battlefront can get the job done with the amount of game modes it has, but I'm not going to guarantee that. But like I said, content was a bit of a worry because I wasn't sure like how the unlocks would work and stuff. And so what happens is like as you gain XP, uh, that XP, whatever you amount of score you get, you know, let's say you get 4,000 as your score, mm. 10% of that turns into credits, like money. Mm. So I'll get 400 credits. And then you spend that on upgrades, whether it's uh, new weapons, uh, star cards, whatever um you can spend it on visual changes on your character which they didn't have available in the beta and that's why i said i'm a little bit worried about the sake of content because the unlocks were there you know whether it's star cards which gave you these like you know one of them was a sniper rifle essentially i forgot the exact name of it uh one of them was a thermal detonator which is basically a grenade and you know there there are these time things where i i use it and i can't just keep spamming it i have to wait until it cools down and it almost brings an arcade into it that mm. the old battlefronts had mm. um so it works in that way but like i said you know in the terms of unlocks i'm a little bit afraid because uh they had four guns in the beta and i understand they you know battlefield that uh the battlefield 3 beta didn't have that much in it either but battlefront had four guns in its thing and about like eight star cards or ten star cards I had a good amount of them it had like the, the jump pack which is essentially a jet pack uh that lets you jump very far uh, it had, like I said, the sniper rifle, thermal detonator, ion rockets, uh, I or ion grenades, um, a personal shield. Um, it, it had a lot of stuff that let, got gave me a feel for the game. And what these star cards do is essentially develop your play style. Because um, I realized that you know you can you can pick your star card loadout, and then your partner can pick his, and then you can pick your partner's star card loadout, even if you don't have the shit unlocked. Mm. Which they talked about a little bit, but seeing it actually in practice. Uh, really makes it an interesting concept because now uh, if I play with a friend, I could be like, okay, I'm going to use the jump pack and the, the ion grenades because we're going to be playing whatever. And he'll be like, okay, I'm going to use the sniper and the thermal grenade. Hmm. And depending on what situation we're in, now we're prepared for either or, and I can switch between those two and use them. And so, like I said, it, it makes teamwork special. It makes it useful. And um, that's another thing is that, you know, you can, like in many dice games, spawn your teammates so teamwork really is uh effective in this game i i never in my eight hours did i was i able to do a call of duty which is when two people were shooting at me i was able to take both of them out uh absolutely not okay so it's, it, you have to work hmm. you have to work together so uh it, 
and um, I was able to take out one, definitely, you know, if I can, if my aim's on, but not two, uh, which makes a big difference because it shows that I can't just run and gun. Uh, but speaking of that, well, I'm on a roll right now. Uh, you, <laughs> you literally, you, it's almost a run and gun -ish. It remind It's a very fast-paced battlefield is what I'd like to call it in the certain sense of gameplay. I'll get into the battlefield reskin bullshit in a second. But honestly, it, it's, uh, it's... It's very fast paced, at least in drop zone. Um, Walker assaults a bit slowed down, your more typical dice experience. But as for um, how the, the gameplay is in drop zone, which is my personal favorite mode in the beta, it's very fast paced. It's very Star Wars. It, it, it feels like how I'd imagine the battle. Like the, the trench warfare in Battlefront is better than any fucking World War II game that's ever been made, World War I game that's ever been made. It, it's insane how authentic. And real it is, because I, I don't know if you watch the movies alone, but, you know, you remember the battles on Hoth where these guys are lobbing grenades in the oh, trenches. Yeah, man, of, yeah. Of uh, yeah. yeah and, and, you know, it's like that in, in, in Battlefront. It, it literally brings those battles to life. Now, my final point that I'll get to, unless something comes to mind like it seems to have been doing, <laughs> is that some people are closed-minded douche fucks and decide to say, well, Battlefront is just the Battlefront <laughs> reason. Okay. But okay. Maddie, Battlefront, Battlefield. <laughs> um, look, every studio has their flavor, and people need to get that. Every studio has their flavor. And by that, I mean, for example, this, Fallout fans. Fallout 3 is essentially a reskin of Oblivion with guns. Liar! But, no, that not. No. But, but. <laughs> No, I'm going to say it, because you know what? It basically is. It's that same Bethesda flavor. You you, you could, to put it this way, if you're a fan of just Bethesda's games, you could probably play either Oblivion or Fallout with, without much of an issue. But I'm not calling Fallout 3 an Oblivion reskin, but you could make that argument, just like you could make that argument that Battlefront is a reskin of Battlefield. But they're the same flavor. They're from the same developer. They're going to have the same feel, the same sense of gameplay, that same weighty feel, um, like... How Fallout 3 has that same floaty character feel like Oblivion does. And that it zooms in on people's faces when they talk to you, like in Oblivion. And that, you know, the melee combat is spot for spot, like Oblivion. And that's not a bad thing, because Oblivion was a fucking awesome game. But it's because it's from Bethesda Game Studios, and they had their certain way of making games. And it's always going to have that flavor. And that's yeah, what's happening yeah. with Battlefront. But people can't seem to wrap their heads around that and just want something to complain about. And what I'm trying to say is that... I see the similarities, clear as day. Some of the gunplay, the way you sprint, some of the sounds you make when you sprint, very battlefield reminiscent. Um, some of the battle chatter is very authentic in the sense of Star Wars, but like I said, it reminds you of Battlefield. Which, number one, in my opinion, isn't a bad thing, but what I'm saying is that it's from the same studio. It's it's going to remind you of that. It's not going to be something totally different. Uh, it's, it's very weird, you know? Like, you look at game studios and i'm not saying I, I put down innovation but you look at game studios like uh uh, uh i forgot whoever made until dawn uh no, or not until dawn whoever whoever made uh the order 1866 86 fuck it i don't know it's a shitty game <laughs> they originally made the psp god of war titles and now they made the order you know and, and they had to two totally different flavors but you know a lot of these studios kind of follow the same structure, the same path, and people can't seem to get that. But I'm done. I've, I've spoken enough. You're good? You vented? <laughs> I, I think I'm good. I don't know if my shadow play shut down right now. Hold on. I'm going to check my files alone because I don't see that green light on the bottom right oh, corner. Oh, no. Oh, <laughs> no. <laughs> it, no way. It stopped? Oh, my God, dude. Hold on. Let me, let me double click it. That's fucking hilarious. I can send you the files. It's okay. Uh, hour and 11 minutes. We'll see what I was talking about at this point. <laughs> I'm not cutting this out. This is this is raw. This is live. This is... I don't know. Shadowplay is working fine for me. I see that green light. That's that's just great for you, man. Did you I accidentally uh, click the turn off button? <laughs> the turn off is all and plus, and I didn't touch that. <laughs> Great, so I'm just going to go ahead and stop my audacity now. I'm sorry. <laughs> God fucking damn it. This is why we this is why we should start recording on Fridays permanently. So when shit like this happens, you you now you don't have to rush it out. Okay. I'm probably going to do it tomorrow. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> going back to Fraps next week. 
<laughs> hey, it's I, working I hope everyone me. listened this deep. I hope everyone listened this deep because you just saw Shadowplay get defeated. No, it got defeated because of you. You did something wrong. Shadowplay was fine for me. All right, it's still green. I, I, to be to be all totally honest, I I had to have done something because I've been using Shadowplay for like recording the browser, recording there the the there Fallout special videos. Uh, hold on, hold on. Now it could have fucked up. Uh huh. Yeah, could have, but didn't. Could have. <laughs> uh, Regardless. Anyway. So that's what we're playing our favorite news. Our final segment is the fan questions. Uh, let's start off with question number one from Kyle J Young 15 on Twitter. And pardon me, he asks, what is your favorite special video so far and why? Speaking of special videos, that's a good question. Ah, it's it's hard to say. They they each have their quirks about it. Um, I want to say the original because it started it. And I'm like, yeah, I like these videos and it set the tone nicely. So the original strength. Mm, The original for you? Yeah. Uh, for me, mm, I'm going to go with Charisma. Okay. I think that was the most Vault, the most vault Boy, uh, you know, it, it, it was what the Vault Boy is, you know, tr- like charming people, snapping his fucking fingers and looking at them and stuff. And they're like, oh, hey, you're a pretty good guy, you know? Okay. Um, I, I think that's the one I want to go with. And I, I think I found out what is, uh, what's the issue. Um, I'm just going to quickly talk about this real quick, if you don't mind, not to go off topic. We'll go back to the question in a second. So, for some reason, yep. I'm looking at, like, my, my, uh, my hard drive. Yep. And, um, I, for some reason, have a... What the fuck were they doing when they built my PC? I have a 236 gigabyte hard drive, if you want to call it that. And then I have my actual hard drive, which is 2.72 terabytes. Okay. How... How do I make that the active one? Because what happened was my memory got full, and it stopped Why, recording. So you, so you have your solid state, and then you have the the big one, correct? Yeah, it's like local disk, and then I think you just you on uh, Shadow Play you change the output, so you you will go all right, export these videos to this folder on this hard drive. Okay. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna have just to a do bit that. Of, laying a bit of knowledge on you. Shadow Play can do that. It's great. <laughs> Dude, what the fuck? Like, why? Why did this default? Like, why? <laughs> why would it default to the 200 gigabyte one? Like, why would you even put that in there? Just give me the terabytes. <laughs> I have all my games, all my videos and shit on this small pussy drive. Well, obviously, for the games, it makes sense because it's solid state. Um, but, yeah, for Shadow Play, you should really have it go into the terabyte. The big one. Fucking hell. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. All right. That's hilarious. Well, while we're sitting here, I'm going to go ahead and do that. What do I have? GeForce Experience. GeForce Experience. And then you go to the settings and then you change the output folder. Oh, here we go. New volume. Hold on. Wait, wait right for this. Right click. New folder. Oh, shit. Hold on. Wait, right mm. click. Go, just, go, just go to the video uh, area of your folder. terabyte. Shadow folder. Play. All right. Cool. I made a Shadow Play video folder. All right. Click on Shadow Play. Um. Mm. Save location. There you go. There you go. <laughs> it's pretty Shadow fun. play. Select folder. Oh jeez. Hey, at <sighs> least at least you figure it out now and not like when Fallout 4 came out and you're recording a super important thing and then just fucked up on it. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that kind of works out because I'm like I said, I'm recording that road to platinum. It's already up now, but I, I've had to record five hours of footage, so that'll Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, all right. Back to our question. Uh, why? Why are these our favorite special videos? Um, did, we answered that, right? I yes. said mine was most authentic to the Vault Boy, and yours was because you were like, "I like this." Yeah, first is the best. <laughs> okay, so there you go, Kyle. There's your answer in your face, bitch. Uh, our second question comes from Conjay McKay. He asks, "I want to know how you're going to spend November 9th, if not asleep, preparing for about 48 hours without a nap." Oh, that's a good question. Um, oh, yeah. November 9th, what is the day November before Fall. It is, is it a... Uh... Monday. Oh, it's Monday for you, but it's... Oh, no, it is Monday for me. Yeah, obviously, yeah, but, yeah. It's going to be... When your Monday 9th is going to be 10th for me. I just realized that it's going to be released in store before you. 
Australians get their hands on Fallout 4 before anyone else. Yeah! <laughs> 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 it's great. Like, obviously, digitally, it's going to be the same across all regions, except Japan or something. But mm-hmm. yes, we get to go to our midnight launches before. So on November apparently, 9, which is November 8th for you. according to Fallout Temple, the first place to ever get their hands on physical is New Zealand. Uh, New Zealand. Yeah, New Zealand yep. was the first one to get Xbox Ones as well. That, that's just Fuck because them. they're right ahead. And I, I think, though, in between like New Zealand and, and Australia, it's like a couple of hours, like two Okay. So, if yeah, anything, so you're, you're in the they're going to get it first. Oh, man. Fucking, f- what's his name? Gamers Joint. Fuck you, bitch. Yeah, man, Jerry, <laughs> screw you, bro. Fucking getting that shit first. So, anyways, on November 8th, if we want to get specific for me, what am I going to be doing? It is a Sunday. Oh, fuck, why is Fallout come out on the start of the week? That really annoys me. I um, wish it came out on Friday. I should just take that week off, shouldn't I? Yeah. Yeah. I think I'm just going to be... Getting, I guess getting prepared for it, like finalizing video ideas, um, kind of clear. I want to clean my my desk. I'm definitely going to dust everywhere. I want to make, sh- make sure shit is spotless. My room's going to be clean. So no one can fucking bother me when I'm playing Fallout 4 and I'm like, Lone, your room's dirty. My parents don't call me Lone, but if they did, like, no, I'm cleaning. <laughs> I'm not cleaning my room. I'm playing Fallout. That's what I'd do. Um, for me, for November 9th, I know my Brotherhood Archive series ends that day, so I'll probably be uploading that. I know that that's the final day of my Countdown series for Fallout 4, which I will talk about in the future a little bit more. I know that'll be ending that day, so I'll have, like, a big conclusion day. Uh, Yeah. As for what I'm doing that day, I'm probably going to either be mentally preparing myself... (laughs) <laughs> like quite literally like this is it <laughs> have a bath have a bath relax just get you know relax just calm down take a chill pray to god howard and or then... <laughs> or if god howard is truly shining upon us we will already have the game and not be <laughs> praying about it hopefully, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> ah fingers crossed fingers fucking crossed fucking kill someone for that but anyway yeah. As for, like, realistically speaking, let's say, you know, we don't get this game. Me, personally, I'm probably going to be concluding a lot of series of mine. Like Lone said, uh, I think I'll already have my ideas finalized. But, like, I think more so I'm going to try to treat it as any other day. And um, yeah, I- I'm just going to... I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm just going to fucking... I'm, gonna, I'm not going to be able to, like, think about anything else that day. Like, I'm going to try to do other things. But in the back of my head, it's going to be Fallout 4, Fallout 4. Uh, it's I, here, I have man. to ask, I have to ask, just from like a video and YouTube perspective, are you going to do, before you make any videos, a like solid eight hour play, or are you going to like do something for an hour and quickly upload a video? What are you going to do? Uh, because oh, you know, question. you know as well as I do, right, that there's going to be a balance between, I just want to play this fucking game as a fan, and also as well, getting and video as soon as the embargo was lifted. It's, t- it's tough, uh, I know. I think what me, I'm going to do is, like, play for, like, a good amount, maybe a couple of hours, and then do a first impressions. I, I think that's what I'll do. So, at least well, there's something out. Chances are, let's say we don't get these are really copies, um, which, by the way, for everyone listening, we, we haven't even talked about it with anyone yet. Yeah. It's just me alone kind of hoping. Yeah. Um, but uh, if we don't, then I'm imagining that I'm going to be getting this game, like, spot on at midnight. Yep. And if that's the case, then that means I'm probably going to be tired within a few hours. So I'll probably play for a few hours and at least make a video or two right after and then sleep and then get up that next day, really actually November 10th, and play that entire day through because I'll have my content up and from there I can play. Because I feel like if I, um, from our perspective, so hopefully you guys understand that, if we break up, you know, playing this game and uploading videos so much to the point where it's like, I want to keep playing, but I got to make those videos. I understand our, our duty calls, but we don't want to ruin this game for ourselves either. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's that's really important to us because the reason we make videos on this is because we we are so excited for this game, and we, not just because it's our paycheck or whatever. Uh, you know, it, it's it's because we love this series and we love this game and we can't wait for it. So we don't want to ruin it for ourselves. So for me personally, yeah, like I don't want to force videos out. But I also don't want to start up that first hour or couple of hours looking for content. 
you know, yeah. what can I make a video on? Yeah. You know, I just want to kind of play it. Yeah. And that's why we, we always say, well, let's hope we get an early copy because then we can just play it naturally, stumble upon something. Oh, this is, you know, teaching someone about this, yeah. how to do this, yeah. whatever, make a good video. I'm going to do that afterwards, you know, just write down on a little time stamp on a notepad and keep playing. You know, it's a small interruption. You know, you're still just playing the game like anyone else. Yeah, fair enough. Fair enough. So for me, um, I have a plan for each, but, you know, that, yeah. that's essentially what I'm going to do. All right. What about you? Mm, I don't know. <laughs> I don't like. You asked me the question. You don't know what an answer to. Well, because like, it's a balance. Like people ask me alone, do a let's play. I'm like, no. I I wanna <laughs> I wanna enjoy the game. I don't want to be entertaining and and have to talk. I just want to fucking play. Um, I I think I'll play for like a solid. I'll have a solid session. And before I go to bed, I'll have a first impressions video. I think that's my, that's going to be the first, very first video I do a Fallout 4 will be a first impressions because it's going to be quick, easy to make and, and I can get it up there and give my first thoughts. Um, I think then I have the next day, I might take work off, I don't know. And the next day is like literally play for the entire day. I'm, I'll be confident that there's a video up on my channel and then I can just relax, play the game and then start with the actual series that I want to do. Um, I don't know if I want to do like a full review. I don't, I don't think unless we get review copies, it's going to be no point because all reviews yeah, are going to be out, I you do. know, when the embargo is lifted. So, who knows? But yeah, definitely first impressions, and then we'll see where we go from there. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't see. I know that for me personally, the reason like I just want to do how tos and tutorials is because people already come for us for like information and shit. Yeah. You know, I know they they like us for us, especially on this podcast, but. I still want to be of use after the game comes out, and obviously, you know, you have the same thing. And yeah. with the thank God with the Bethesda game, that that's very well possible because it's going to be such a big game. There's going to be so many questions to answer. Yeah. Um, that that's kind of my goal. I, I if we get review copies, I'll try to make the most spoiler-free review I can possibly do. Yeah. Um, or you can even like have timestamps and say, all right, at this section there might be a little bit of spoilers. Skip if you want or whatever. Yeah. Um, but yeah. that's essentially what we're doing, <laughs> how we're going to spend our November 9th, whether we get copies in advance or not. Uh, the next question is a, a big one. Um, I, God damn, why do I keep burping? Fuck. <laughs> this one comes from k Pros on Sugar Bond. A question to everyone in the podcast. I've been wondering about the so-called, in quotes, he says, big blue orbital strike explosion, end quote. Yeah. And is that part of a DLC? What do you think perhaps gets blown up? If you can blow up an important town, where can you seek refuge if you destroy that certain place? Maybe you have loads of choices on it. As you may see in the Broken Steel DLC for Fallout 3 that you had many choices where you could bomb the orbital strike. Ah, uh, from... I almost said at, but like, I don't know, that was broken English there. <laughs> uh, from the Adams Air Force Base. But also, a lot of people have been theorizing that that's the big blue orbital strike from Mothership Zeta as well. So, essentially what he's asking is like, what is this... What do we think this big blue orbital strike is that comes down at the end of the fall for gameplay yeah. trailer um you know hmm. what is this thing i think it's like fallout this is really really stretching it but it could be like fallout falls version of megaton like <laughs> I, I i think that's like that's that's the feeling that i got when i saw it because you know something's Same. exploding it's kind of like kind of like megaton um, I think he was kind of saying, is that part of the DLC? I don't think so. I think that's all main game because Bethesda hasn't even started making DLC from what Yeah, I think he meant, I, I wonder if when he said that, I think he meant like a part of a, a Fallout 3 DLC. I just didn't want to like, because last week I, I, I like, I altered some questions that I felt bad about it. So I think I'm just going to, I wanted to leave the original context. Yeah. So for there, I think he was talking about like Fallout 3's DLC. Um, hmm. But what he, he asked, what do you perhaps think gets blown up? To me, that looked like the institute it had to be the it's institute hot. based off a map yeah. of the based off the map of the uh, of uh, Boston. Um, you can look and see that there's Diamond Park right across the river, and when you look at uh, across the river in um, real life, there's Fenway Park, and then from there, it's the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. I just can't see them though in a trailer showing us such a major plot point. I assume that if it is the Institute, then that's going to be a major part of the story. So why show that in the trailer? Obviously, it's just an explosion with no context. But I, I think it's a side quest. That's just my opinion. It's a side quest. It could be a, a pretty significant 
faction or whatever. It could be the remnants of the Enclave. I mean, who knows? But I can't see that being a big part of the story. If I'm, if I'm wrong, I'll admit that. But yeah, not in a trailer. Mm-hmm. I don't think they'd actually do that. A lot of people wonder as well, does, was, you know, maybe you don't have to blow up the Institute. Can I just blow up Diamond City? <laughs> you maybe, know? maybe you have a choice. Maybe you like, you know, yeah. you have the orbital strike and say, oh, I want to blow up this, this, and that. Maybe you can do up multiple areas. Who knows? Oh, my fucking Lord. <laughs> I, I mean, another people uh, thought people had was that maybe this, although it, it does look like an orbital strike because it comes down and then we see a big blue explosion, but we really don't see, like, at least according to my memory, and I, 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 I know I'm a sinner, but I haven't watched the trailer in a while. But I don't remember seeing like debris or like buildings explode or anything like that. It looked like it was an explosion that hit like a needle on top of the tower. Yeah. More than anything, you know, if you go back and look at it, at least according to my memory, I remember seeing essentially like a part of the city blowing up. It looks like something was almost powering up. It's like it was like engulfed in light. I don't, I don't, I don't know if there is destruction or not but it's again it's very hard to say from that what is less than 10 second clip less than five seconds maybe i don't know but it'll be it'll be interesting hopefully it means that we can just like blow up shit like at will that would be cool Mm -hmm. sorry i apologize for typing i'm just i'm gonna i'm gonna give it a quick look just to make sure we're accurate here (laughs) in one second because i don't have you know shadow play's not running right now so it's not like it's gonna hear anything All right, hold on. It's gonna, it's gonna come across on mine. Ooh, I don't know actually. <laughs> Adam bomb, baby little Adam bomb. I want her. E, yeah. E, oh man, that's tough to say, dude. Because there's, I don't remember the flames after the explosion because it's like big blue orbital strike comes down. Yeah, yeah, it comes down and then boom, fucking ginormous like flame fueled explosion. Okay. Uh, okay, so I know this is not like news to anyone, but something definitely blows up. Yeah, it's it's definitely a huge explosion. But again, so, yeah, what it is, who knows? Like, who knows? <sighs> but so yeah. well, we know this much. It's based off the map of Boston. It's definitely the institute. It's getting blown up. So, but that's it showed us that you can destroy the institute. Yeah. Why? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's the point I'm making. Like, why would they show us that? And it's presumably the Institute's going to be a major part of the of the story. So I, I reckon maybe, maybe, just maybe, it's just like a one of the bases of the Institute. I, I don't see it us exploding the... In, maybe at the end of the game, you can explode their main base of control, but who knows? I, it's it's really tough to say just from that quick glimpse. Like we don't, we don't I mean, even know, like, all the factions that are going to be in this game. We, we've been given a small slice. I just, I mean, uh, it, it's it's so weird. Like, they showed us the exiting the vault. They showed us blowing up this institute base. Uh, you know, I know it's different when you experience it, but it's like, I still want to see it for the first time and be like, holy fuck, I just blew that place the fuck up, you know? I, hmm. I, I mean... I know Bethesda's smart because you you see how cautious they are with spoilers for the story. I I just get this feeling like there's more to it that we don't know. Yeah. Um. With, like with everything with Fallout Four, obviously, but I'm saying like there's there's just simply has to be either a more choices, b maybe it's not that easy to blow that thing the fuck up. You know, <laughs> there's there's got to be more to it where I I feel like there's a reason they showed us that. Well, it um, looked fucking. Maybe epic. they made the yeah. <laughs> I mean that's true. They they ended on an epic note, but you know that's it's a trailer. Yeah. Stop! Don't ruin things. <laughs> like I, yeah, I know like many people didn't want to see the um I, even you, Maddie, you do you don't want to see the exit out of the vault because that's such a yeah. scenic, serene moment where you kind of want to experience it for the first time yourself. Um, but I can kind of see why Todd Howard did it just to show you the first glimpses of the game. But yeah, it's mm. I, I I think we'll I mean, be okay. <laughs> Yeah, I think we'll be okay. I mean, as for the vault exiting thing, I think the difference, though, is that from there, I know I can, like, go anywhere. And that, that sense of choice is more overwhelming than the site itself. Um, actually being there and being like, okay, instead of following the demo where they go down the path, I can actually go turn 180 and go the other way. Yeah. Uh, whereas this seems like a quest choice, yeah. and that's why people are a little irked by it. Yeah, fair enough. Fair enough. But um, that's that's our answer to that, k Pros. Good question. The final question comes from Ross Cuth. And Ross, you are my boy. He asks, 
if there's a range of death animations, what would you like to see? And I'm guessing he is referring to such as the death claw picking you up and stabbing you. What I would, else? I would love to see from a third person perspective, a death claw just grab you in the middle and just rip you like the Mortal Kombat split in half. Blah, 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 blah. Oh my god. Yep. That's what I would like I... to see. I think one of the cooler ones, I mean, I'm just going to kind of go through all the ones I can think of. I, I think it'd be cool to see like a Yao Guai actually be what it is, which is a bear and, and maul you to death. Or just like you know, stick just... its hand through your stomach or something gross. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like tackle you on your back. It like zooms out in the third person. He just fucking wipes the floor with your face until there's nothing left. <laughs> Do you know what I'd love to see up. as well? I would love to see like a Sibmune Behemoth. But they're not. They don't seem that big. But if it has like a massive club or whatever, to slam you and you fly into the sky and just get airborne, that would be fucking. Sick. <laughs> <laughs> I just hope. I mean, because Fallout's a lot more gory than uh, Skyrim was. Where I hope you know it's not like you just fly and you ragdoll, yeah. but you actually like. Like if I get slapped in the head by a behemoth with a giant fucking club, like I expect my head to fall. Well, you know, we we saw the um, what's it called, the rocket sledge, and how that character just got fucking decimated. Oh, Belira, oh, right? he was fucking God. awesome. Like, surely yeah. if a fucking super mutant behemoth or a death claw does the same thing, like swipes at you, you're gonna get fucked up. But are we gonna see that animation unless we're in the third person? I mean, who knows? <sighs> I mean. What what else is there out there in the Fallout universe? Uh, hopefully they bring back Wanamingos. I I would love to see a Wanamingo fucking. Well, I think just... those like crab kind of creature things were the Wanamingo equivalent like, that we saw in the trailer. I think Nothing they were crabs. beats the Wanamingos. They're so fucked up <laughs> They're looking. Fucked they up. look like they are fucked up. Oh god! Like I just picture them like using their tail to fight. Right? They have tails that. Yeah, like you, no, think... they're using their like I think their tentacles is the. Better to yeah, like that's, using that's them to grab best. you and then like chumping down on your upper torso and ripping your body oh, off. Yeah, oh, fuck yeah. God. <laughs> um, all right, let's let's think of some other ones. Uh, hmm. I'm trying to go through everything in my head. Like I keep thinking of vicious dog. Like that's that's stupid. Yeah. Actually, you know what? When you look at dog meat, the way he fucking like ripped that guy's throat out. Fuck yeah, that was sick. Yeah, that'd be kind of crazy to see that like carried over into. Uh, like, an actual vicious dog killing me. How about, okay, we die from, like, a, a, a ghoul somehow, because we, we're bad at the game. <laughs> what do you think they do? Do you think they just maul you to death, like, rip off your skin? Rip your eyes out, maybe, something, something uh, gross like that. <laughs> damn. Yeah, it'd be um, fucking sick. And what are even, like, the, the synth strider or whatever the fuck they are? Like, oh, what yeah. are their special ability? Like, I, I, I don't know why, when I look at them, I'm like, yeah, they'll probably, like, shoot some sort of laser weapon that would, like, disintegrate me or something. That's what I see. I don't know. Yes. Um, I wonder what happens, because they have, uh, like, cryo weapons in Fallout 4. You know, they, they showed the cryo later pistol in the trailer, and then they showed uh, one of the synths using it. I wonder if, and this is a long shot, but I wonder if you could, like, like essentially free, like freeze someone. Fucking uh, Sub-Zero like style, and then just, like... Break them into a million pieces. Well, because you can change and mix and match stuff. Obviously, there's. I would be dumbfounded if the first Fallout game to remove the flamer was Fallout 4. But it would be awesome to take that, edit that to, like, an ice machine almost, and, mm. and literally, like, spray ice on someone and freeze them to death, you know? And have them, like, be a frozen carcass. And, like, I wonder if, like, that's something that the synths could do. Also, I mean, I know they're, they're designed to look like humans, but they're mainly androids. I wonder if they could use their strength to just... Punch a fucking hole in your stomach or something. <laughs> I, I would think it would be cool with, like, the frozen one. I just got this idea. So they, you freeze someone, and then you pull out, like, a dart gun, and you just shoot the dart gun, and it just breaks off just the head. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> that would be fucking awesome. We, we're getting uh, inventive now. <laughs> yeah, but let, let's keep... Let's hold on. We got, we got a little bit more. We haven't been going on too long here. Uh, All right. <sighs> How about, like... Well, the, the junk jet with the teddy bear, that was cool. It exploded your yeah. head. Or the, the enemy's head. <laughs> you shoot a pencil and it just sticks in their forehead and they just drop back. <laughs> My God. I do wonder, though, how gruesome it's going to be because, you know, it's it's definitely not going to be as gruesome as Mortal Kombat or Doom or anything like that because <laughs> in Australia, the game's MA-15. So it's, it's definitely going to be more stylized deaths. But in terms of... I know limbs fall off and stuff, but... Whether you see guts or whether, you know, it gets that gruesome as Mortal Kombat. I mean, who knows? I don't. Think I just so, think though. to, like, what Todd Howard said, where you can, like, pull off the panels of robots and you can see their insides. Like, I'd imagine that 
these humans have to have some degree of insides uh, to some sense. I mean, I know in uh, in the Fallout 4 gameplay trailer in the beginning when you see uh, the protagonist shoots some guy running through the doorway, when his body falls apart, you see like his arm fall off and it just splits and you can actually see the bone sticking through nice. both ends of the arm. And then so, you pick up his arm and smack him across the head with it. <laughs> <laughs> so like, I, I imagine there's there's, you could probably see maybe like more specific guts like not crazy in detail yeah. but like you can identify parts and stuff where i wouldn't be surprised if like a death claw just like fucking ripped your stomach out or something like that i reckon a death claw your... should have the same power as like the rocket sledge i reckon the death claw one swipe should be able to just decimate you and just rip off part of your body Man, that's gonna be so fucking annoying <laughs> it's gonna be cool though wouldn't it uh I what should, else surely there? a submune behemoth would be able to do that. That would have the strength. Yeah, I mean, I mean, you look at you look at the special videos. Uh, you see like the fucking um, oh. Mirelurk. Yeah, yeah. They, they fucking chopped the vault boy in half. I wonder if, like, <sighs> you know, they they do a pinching sick. move. Yeah, they do like a pinching move, and like they, they get you in a death animation, and like you just look down, you see both like claws just like pinching on you. You see like blood start leaking out. Oh, <laughs> like yeah. you're, you're you're Brian, like, oh fuck! <laughs> just in half. What, what about even like, I don't know if you remember the blood bug, which would like stick its um, what, whatever you'd call it into you, its mouth, and then it would just start sucking the blood from you. What if it just like, if it got to you at one stage, it kept sucking the blood dry, and then you just shriveled up into nothing. <laughs> yeah. I think it just blows up and like it just says you died. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the fucking bloodborne blood or death. um Dark Souls style. Oh, man. These are great ideas. We should work at Bethesda. We should work at Bethesda. Hint, 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 hint. Let's yeah, get jobs uh, there. <laughs> not like, you know, because people think we already work there or anything, but... I saw a comment on the podcast last week. Someone was like, oh, yeah, Lone's working with Bethesda or something. I'm like, ah, I'm, I'm just doing a con. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm not employed by Bethesda. <laughs> Uh, yeah, when I did the when I did the fucking Cody away, they're like, yeah, but that's just probably you're probably working with them now. They're paying you. You just like change it now. I'm like, no, they just gave me codes. I just want to give them to you guys. Yeah, we're not getting, getting paid. paid. <laughs> <laughs> I wish. I wish. Yeah. yeah. Sure. My favorite company wants to pay me. Sure. But no. Like, <laughs> we'll be happy with t-shirts and Vault Boy plushies. Like... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Basically. <laughs> oh man, good times. Anyways. Anyways. That wraps up everything we had to talk about this podcast in fact so thank you loan for your time you're welcome anytime see you again next week yeah oh sweet you're gonna be on next week cool 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 <laughs> we'll actually get guests on next week even though a lot of people really like it when it's just me and you maybe we'll cut no off and just like never have a guest on again <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a good balance we'll, we'll try to do it again sometime yeah <laughs> <laughs> oh man Anyway. Yeah, sometimes we like to have the guest conclude the podcast alone. If you'd like to go ahead and do that. My guest, Matty. I'm kidding. That... <laughs> <laughs> I realized when I said that, I was like, uh, uh, No, oh. that's good. Um, Anyways, this is the end of the podcast. I've never ended a podcast. I don't think I have. So I'm going to fuck it up. Um, Again, whatever. T-shirts, blah, blah, blah. Noel's ass <laughs> joke. <laughs> but uh, until next time, thank you for sticking around. I, I just want to say that. If you're listening at this stage, you're awesome because it's been yes. two hours and we're just talking yep. about fucking how to kill each other in Fallout 4. It's fucking yeah. Anyways, yes. You're true. You're a lot of our guys like to, to stick around the whole way though, and I, we do appreciate. We, we that. do appreciate it. Like yeah, like obviously with retention, people drop off naturally. But if you're here at the end, we love you. We salute you. Like you, the real MVP. Literally. <laughs> but anyways, guys and girls, please take care of yourself and see you later. Adios.